Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, to change things up a little bit from last week, we are covering Zombieland, which came out in 2009. But before we go into the reveal, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. So, I am with my creamed cinnamon honey and my lemon juice. I am drinking the Republic of Teas, the Crown, the Queen's Blend, or the Queen's Evening Tea. It's got biodynamic, which I still don't know what that means, organic chamomile, and natural honey flavor. But unfortunately, uh, this uh, the Crown series and the Republic of Tea is discontinued, but I will hunt down the alternative version for the Republic of Tea and have that linked below. Yes. And I am drinking Bigelow's Mint Medley Herbal Tea which has peppermint leaves, spearmint leaves, rose hips, lemon peel, and hibiscus. It is caffeine free. <laughs> I have finished that other cup. Uh, and thank so. you to the Republic of Tea for allowing us to continue to do what we love. And for our tea sippers out there, brew yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. What was that? Nothing. I hit my ring on the... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> fine. Everything's fine. Continue. <laughs> so for <laughs> the summary of Zombieland, an awkward young guy trying to reach his family in Ohio unexpectedly joins forces with a gun-toting, twinkie-obsessed man and two sisters trying to travel and survive across a zombie-filled America. And that's the modified version of the IMDb. Because a part, like... Anyways, <clears throat> so for entertainment, you, you probably uh, could have guessed, but this movie is a 7.75 for me. It's like, we all, I think we, if, if you're a longtime listener, you know, I'm not a zombie movie type of person, but this movie is great. It's got a higher rating than I thought it would from you. <laughs> no, like this movie, I'll watch over and over again. Like oh, yeah. it, it's... It's because it takes a ridiculousness of zombie movies and just, like, puts it, not from just a comedic perspective, but, like, be, like, a more realistic perspective. Because there's so many times where, like, where we're like, why aren't you double tapping? And, like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you... Yeah. Uh (laughs) And they just, like, uh, they just bring those issues of zombie movies to the forefront and uh, make fun of it, which I think is really mm-hmm. refreshing. Um, now, I will say my my only complaint with this movie really is, I guess, two complaints is that the main character is narrating and he's traveling by himself. And there's points where the movie cuts, like like for example, when he's saying like uh, explaining the kill of the week. And it cuts to someone he doesn't even know, and then it shows the kill. It's like in that mo- uh, movie or in that moment, yeah, it's funny, but from like a narrative perspective, it kind of makes you it. <coughs> it doesn't quite make sense that he would even know about it. No dying on the podcast. Die on your own time. (laughs) Rude. Okay. But like, in most movies, whenever a, there's a narrator, like, uh, if it's an adult narrating about a kid, kid, Oh, sorry, I need two more seconds. <clears throat> Did 
Did you try to inhale the tea? Because it's supposed to go in your stomach, not your lungs. <laughs> but uh from a uh, most movies when a or they have a narrator it's like the character from a <laughs> perspective of after the movie took place <clears throat> like if it's a like hindsight yeah like if it's a movie about a kid it's the their adult version reflecting mm -hmm. back on the movie stuff like that so with it being a real-time narration like it's in his head it doesn't really make a lot of sense that they're like oh here's the actual kill of the week so like from a comedy perspective yeah it's funny but from like a typical movie narration perspective, it, it kind of like, it isn't, uh, that's kind of deemed as like, you shouldn't do that type of thing. But, uh, so that's one complaint. And the other complaint is the fact that, like, the, the character chemistry is so good between all of them. But then, like, towards the end, it feels like they f make the the two girls dumb purposely just to push the story. Um, well, they add in extra drama that wasn't necessarily needed. Yeah, they add in extra drama. They set it up where the girls have to be saved mm -hmm. by the guy. And it's like, it kind of... It's like, why set up two very strong female characters? Well, especially one very strong female character, only to, like, have her become the damsel because she did some mm -hmm. stupid stuff like that. It kind of killed the the character building in that regard. Bit. And it made the story feel more forced in mm -hmm. that particular... It's like, the movie is, like really really good up to the part where they go to the park and then once they start being dumb at the park it just it feels forced yeah. um but like besides that i love the comedy of the movie i love the the fact that they expand on the ridiculousness of like zombie movies and they like try and fix it uh, I love the Bill Murray cameo. <laughs> I think everyone likes the Bill Murray cameo. <laughs> and the fact that, like, the way he dies and, and then, like, <sighs> just, <laughs> just, like, uh, just, that whole scene is, like, it didn't need to be in the He's movie. He's an but amazing actor, and I love him. It's, like... Uh, it's like they didn't need to have that scene in the movie, but, like, everyone's glad that that scene was in their type of thing. Yes. But um, I'm a little sad that they killed him because it, it was a stupid thing to do. Like, what did he expect to happen? It's the zombie apocalypse. You go in there dressed and looking like a zombie and sounding like a zombie. Then, yeah. <laughs> but I also love how his death was also like a butt of the joke, too, where he's yeah. like, oh, I never was very good at practical jokes. Yes. <laughs> Like they just like build it up rather than be it's like oh practical joker <laughs> yeah so uh, it was my bad <laughs> <laughs> so like that that whole like he gets poked there he's like that's still tender <laughs> it's just like this that movie is such great though. <laughs> It's like this movie is ridiculous in like the best of ways. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I was like, if you're if you're not like a zombie movie person, like I still feel like you can get a lot of enjoyment out of oh, this yeah. movie. So. There's so many relatable moments, even like not even with the zombies. It's just the interactions between yeah. the four. Yeah, and I guess that's uh that's another thing I can mention is like I love how distinct they make all of the characters from yes. each other. 
Um, but it's like, on the one hand, it makes it easy to tell them apart. But on the other hand, it makes the chemistry between the characters a lot more interesting as well. Because, like, all these characters are, like, as opposite as opposite gets. And somehow they all get along really well. <laughs> well, well like, a bunch of misfits. Overall. Yeah, exactly. So. Bunch of misfits, completely different personality types and everything. And they just, they get along so well. They make a nice family. Yeah. But... <laughs> So it's it's great. Um, this one for me is a solid eight. Honestly, I love this movie. It's so much fun. It grabs my attention whenever it's on. So it's there have been times where I put it on with the intention of it being a background movie, but I get sucked into it every time. <laughs> and end up ignoring whatever I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> instead and just listening to it. So I am I end up just fully watching it <laughs> all the way through instead. <laughs> and it's, it's a specific kind of movie that can do that, and it's nice. <laughs> so um, it's, it's really interesting. It's with the varied personality types, with the humor, with the different varied kills. And the the way that they take the story. You really root for Tallahassee finding that Twinkie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little surprised that they don't stop at more places to find the Twinkie. But um, it's funny that that's like a strong side story arc. Yeah, like that. That's like, like one of the biggest him character motivations he has. They call it his one weakness. It's his one weakness. Otherwise, he's a total badass, but he is obsessed with finding a Twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, I love the rules. That he goes through because most of them make sense. Most of them make sense. <laughs> um, there's a couple that are like, mm. <laughs> that's kind of a personal thing, but on the whole, they're fair. <laughs> yeah. And believable. Cardio would be important. Buckling up your seatbelt would definitely be important. I was surprised with all his rules that it wasn't immediately apparent that he needed to check the back seat. Yeah, that's true. Like he added it a little bit later when there was an incident. But okay. Maybe that's just a girl thing. Like it's ingrained in me that you always check the back seat before you get into the vehicle anyway. But especially in a zombie apocalypse. Maybe double check that your vehicle's secure. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's smart, even, you know, beyond the rules. Like, he drops his keys and does another lap instead of immediately trying to pick them up and try again with the car door. Um, so he keeps ahead of the zombies and doesn't give them a chance to overwhelm him. Yeah. That's that freaking same. refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> there were a lot of things that we'll get into in the realism that just. It's not a realistic movie. At all. <laughs> Well, it's weird because it's but like it's, it's fun. It seems like it almost tries to be realistic with the rules. There are moments. Yes. But then on the other it hand... It has a nice balance, I mm -hmm. feel like, that it's not realistic when you look at it um, really hardcore, which I can't not do that. You know me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't not do that. But it's relatable enough in situations and interactions that it doesn't take you out of the movie experience completely. So it keeps you drawn in, which that's really hard to do with a movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah. For it to not be realistic, but still not take you out of the movie experience. 
especially with someone that looks super hardcore at the realism. Yeah. So that's a nice change and bravo for doing that. That's really hard to do. Yeah, because I had a similar situation where I'm like, oh, I've seen this movie before. I'm just going to have it in the background. I just got sucked into it. (laughs) It's hard not to. It's such a fun, entertaining, hilarious movie. And even so, like I my my husband who does not like horror movies, he loves this movie. Yeah, uh, my husband isn't really into horror movies either, but he does like zombie movies, and this one is always just been one that we both laugh at. So, um, it's it's so much fun. That's the best thing that I can say about it is it's fun. <laughs> yeah. It's a good distraction. It's one to put on and just kill some time because you are going to get sucked into it, most likely. Yeah, make sure you can finish the movie. (laughs) Yes. I I get annoyed if I have to stop it. (laughs) I want to finish the movie. (laughs) Um, It does feel like there's a little bit of forced drama toward the end, especially when they mention that they are going to travel like they had agreed to travel as far as Pacific Playland, and then they would go their separate ways. So it sounded like the guys were planning on going with them to the park. Yeah. And having some fun, because Enjoy the Little Things is on the list. And they were enjoying spending time together. They were bonding. As much as they were trying not to get too close to each other, you could tell. (laughs) They were forming some bonds. So I know it was supposed to be like mostly their trust issues, the girls' trust yeah, issues. that's what I took it as. But it seemed forced all the same. So, and unnecessary. And when they were supposed to be the clever ones, the smart girls, it was a super dumb move. Yeah. And really out of character for them. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the when they activated the park, it was a loud, bright beacon. They were ringing the dinner bell. To every zombie in the area. Yeah. <laughs> so it just didn't make that much sense. And that is a big point that I'll harp on in the realism, of course. <laughs> but otherwise, it's it's a fairly solid movie story-wise. Mm-hmm. It does have some flaws with like the narration, like you were saying, how like how could he even have known the actual kill of the week if he's only seen Tallahassee and the girls? Yeah, it's just so weird because like in the the first half where uh, he is explaining why he has the rules and then they're cutting to examples of what would happen if you don't follow that rule. That made sense because the movie was showing here's an example yeah. So that still fit with the narration, but then to him then be like, oh, well, here's the kill of the week. So, yeah, they just yeah. played with that, around with that a little bit too much for it to be typical, like, movie structure type of, yeah. Yeah. Still funny and still entertaining. Yeah. And it was a, a great scene, but it just seemed a little, little out of place there. But that's, okay. that's what I got as far as entertainment. I'm good with going on to. So, um, so for realism, I gave it a 2.5. So my biggest beef, which I'm sure will be your biggest beef, is they have all of these rules, but like one rule they don't seem to have, which would seem very important is to not make too much noise. So there are multiple times in the movie where they shoot guns into the air or do like target practice, stuff like that. And like I could waste understand. Of ammo. Yeah, waste of ammo. I could see like if you're needing it for target practice, I could but it's like don't have that don't be doing target practice in the place where you're staying. Like yeah. do it like as but it's like even that's you know like it like you said it's a waste of ammo and 
like it's not like you can go to a store and buy ammo like you don't know like even if you go to like a gun store that has ammo you don't know if it's been previously raided by another person you have no idea where you're going to get more bullets um so yeah shooting the gun into the air uh especially like when they found the hummer i feel like they're yes. like very vulnerable oh my god yes that hurt that physically hurt to watch yeah and i know he was enjoying the little things but you just found that precious resource don't waste it all in one go please for nothing yeah yeah and give away your position while you're at it yeah and then how how once they got to the park how careless wichita was about their safety Yes. Like she just turned on all of the lights, which by the way, if it's the under the world, how are they getting electricity? How are they getting electricity? So that was actually my biggest issue, (laughs) to be perfectly honest, was how no matter where they went, all of the utilities worked perfectly normal. They never once had an issue with electricity or water. Yeah, that's true. Uh-huh. Yep. But um, I, I think like the lights, it's a little bit more subtle because it's like them shooting a gun into the air. You're like, what the heck? That's making noise. Well, the lights like you kind of have to think about it for a second. And you're like, oh, yeah. It's like, how would there be lights? But um, just like, you know, Wichita was so careful about uh, the zombie safety as well as people safety. And then she's over here like, ah, this is fine. Um, I know she wanted to give her sister a day of just fun and being a kid, but that was still a super dumb move. Yeah. And then also the rides don't work like that, but we'll get to. Yeah. But, um, (laughs) them, uh, so once the zombies get there, them abandoning the Hummer was a really dumb move. Like, even with their zombies on top of them, physics, if you stop suddenly, the objects on top will keep moving. So that they could have at least attempted to slam on the brakes, see if the zombies came off. And if they didn't, then, like, they were able to hang on. Then at that point, maybe. But it's like, the Hummer was the best protection that they had in that area. And escape. And yeah, and their mode of escape, but they're when like there are more on their way. Yeah, swarming. but they're like, yeah. no, this is fine. We're going to mm-hmm. abandon the the moving vehicle and instead trap ourselves on a drop tower, which manufactured drama. Ah, yeah, very manufactured. <laughs> like they literally were tra- They trapped themselves on the ride, and. Oh, and like that whole... (laughs) They got the use of that park and they were making sure that they showed every right they could. (laughs) Like, it was just so, so frustrating watching like that. Once they get to the park, that until the end of the movie, I'm just frustrated when I (laughs) I watch this movie. Because it doesn't make any sense. Um, Absolutely. But, and then of course, like, you know, I'm not a ride operator, so I don't know like a hundred percent how everything works, but I would assume that shooting a gun at the control panel is not going to like hold the ride Work up. Work as intended. Yeah. Yeah. Um But like I, I didn't really count off too much on like them being able to activate the ride and then hop on and stuff like that. Well, I guess the, the one oh, thing, I <laughs> actually, now that I think about it, uh, the uh, rides these days do have safety mechanisms where if it's a thing that goes over, it literally will not move the ride unless, uh, unless all of them are green, mm-hmm. unless all of the straps are green. But to be fair, that can actually be overridden apparently mm-hmm. um it's some some specific rides not all rides because there is an accident a few years ago where is actually in a drop tower actually where uh the the safety was it actually 
Well, as I thought that versus a, a roller coaster, but um, but there the person's uh harness over them wasn't completely secured, and unfortunately they they fell out. But um, but the whole thing with that was there wasn't enough. Uh, I know they're still trying to investigate what happened, but. Because the ride operators claimed that all of the buttons were green and it still allowed the ride to go up anyways. But I also know there are times where it's like, as long as they check it and verify that everything's good, they do, a lot of rides have like an override for that because it could just be a light malfunction. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that it's broken. But anyways, uh, yeah, that that's all I got on my end that I can think of but those were the ones that stick stuck out the most and bothered me so i gave it a one uh <laughs> the utilities really really bothered me <laughs> so hard because so, in the convenience store they even the refrigerators and stuff were working yes. too right yeah, yeah all the freezers all the refrigerators were working just fine it had clearly been months since this started months and everything's fine and still working like normal no that's not how any of this works not at all yeah but they never have an issue anywhere they go no um uh, when they find the the hostess truck there's just a buttload of snowballs, not in boxes or anything like it cascades down. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's not how they would have transported those in the box. They would have been in boxes that were labeled. Yeah. So, no, I know why they did it, because just visually seeing them cascade out of the thing. It's disappointing that there's not a single Twinkie, but. That's also not the only things that Hostess makes, by the way, are Twinkies and Snowballs. They have other products, too. Well, I'm surprised that they didn't have, like, a more of a variety of products in the truck. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, there would have been Ding Dongs. There would have been <laughs> Sorry, the all kinds of me. things. <laughs> There would have been all kinds of things. So it's not just Twinkies and Snowballs that Hostess makes. And they wouldn't have just been finding Snowballs. Plus, are there actually, like, just Hostess trucks? Because I would think that that would be a part of, like, just everyday, like, freight that they put. It depends on the area, I would imagine. Because they could potentially be using those trucks to take it to the bigger suppliers hmm. for freight. But it just depends. Um, it, it's also good advertising when you see them out on the road. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Uh, I don't understand how when they're going back through telling how it all started for him... Um, how he wasn't bit by the zombie neighbor because she turned while he was asleep. Yeah, that was. Movie would have been a hell of a lot shorter. I also had did not realize that uh, Amber Heard was this, in this movie. Was that? It was her, wasn't it? It was. I didn't even realize. It was. I didn't even know until I was uh, reminding myself of the like the character names and I'm like Amber Heard it says like uh uh 403 that's like what they called her character I'm like yeah. what and then he said oh that's neighbor from blah blah I'm like oh <laughs> so that was interesting the one that tried to bite him yeah, yeah yep was, yep yep okay uh-huh yep um I did like though that he used the top of the toilet yes. as a weapon that was very smart. Because there are so many other movies that I'm like, you have a weapon right there. It is weighted and it will work. And even if, if on the off chance it breaks, 
then you can stab with it. And it'll still be heavy. So that's a really good weapon that so many people overlook. Mm -hmm. And it was just so nice to see that. I did appreciate that. Um, but I, I don't understand how he wasn't bit by her. Yeah. It's like the movie, it was literally one of those movies got movie moments. Cause it's like waited yeah. for the perfect time for him to wake up. And then she's like, ah. <laughs> yeah. He had plot protection. Yeah. <laughs> so as the main character, he had plot protection. Um, uh, Tallahassee always picks the biggest gas guzzling monsters of vehicles that are completely inefficient and don't make that much sense apart from armor wise see and i also took it as like a slight character flaw because he does seem uh -huh. to be one of those people who's like i need to show how manly and powerful i am yes but at the same time, there's still better, more fuel efficient vehicles for that. And gas stations are going to run out yeah. of gas. <laughs> yeah. And also if uh, the pumps don't work because electricity and all is out. Yeah, I just saw that. I was like, do pumps need electricity then... to be able to work? Like they're going to have to find different methods of getting gas. And if it's been months... The gas and other vehicles that they're going to be able to siphon out isn't going to work as well. So you're going to have a problem there. Well, I know uh, I during the pandemic and I wasn't driving, I like looked up how good gas stays in your car. And uh, it said between six months to a year, that's, that's the time frame that gas can start getting sludgy and start impacting uh, how it works in your engine. Yeah. Um, still, it's they're not going to find many, many good sources for gas that are easily attainable, typically. Yeah. So, um, especially when they're traveling on their own and have to watch their backs while doing this stuff. Well, you would think that they would at least find, like, if they found a good source for gas, they would at least have containers to put it in. You would think, but they never once showed it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm saying, like, as they a realism, they should have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they also never showed them getting food. That's Ever. Very true. That's like, they very hunted true. for the Twinkie, but otherwise they never really showed the food. That's very true. Ever. So, that's the thing. Um, he expended so much ammo for no reason. And they used guns a lot, which guns are loud. Guns are very loud. Even I feel like in most situations, loud. they would be used as a last resort. Or for like the big groups and things. Things you need immediate firepower for that you cannot use a melee weapon for. Yeah. He did use a banjo, and he did use a bat a few times. But on the whole, it was guns. And you have a finite source of bullets, and there's no guarantee that you're going to find them at the next stop that you're at. Like you were saying, if you found a place that sold ammo, there's no guarantee that it hadn't already been raided by someone else. So, conserve what you can, maybe? Yeah. I agree with the double tap rule. Make sure that they're dead, so that you don't get dead. But when you don't need to use a gun, and announce to the entire town your location... Yeah. And call the zombies to you and make an even bigger problem. Maybe use a melee weapon. Well, I did find it interesting too or how a like weapon. they make it very uh, prominent, like point to double tap. But then, like whenever there's enough zombies, they don't double no, tap. Yeah, mm, they don't. Um, we already talked about the utilities. I mentioned it a few times in my notes. It just never made sense to me. 
how everything worked perfectly normal. That's not how it worked. Um, the prank was really dumb. Again, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. <laughs> I like that they at least injected some humor into it of him saying I was never a very good practical joker. And the whole scene was just Bill Murray's amazing. <laughs> um, there was manufactured drama when they left because of the trust issues, which weren't even that bad. She could have just ignored it the next day. And, you know, like this never happened kind of thing and they were already planning on splitting after the park anyway so whatever like it didn't have to mean anything to begin with mm -hmm. so it just seemed dumb that they left them all together and they put themselves in that damsel in distress situation they abandoned the vehicle which was also stupid and stayed in the park instead of trying to find a way out of the park, which was also very stupid and against character. Yeah. Um, those rides, I don't believe they would have worked like they were showing. Like, they weren't even hitting the buttons to make the rides work or anything. They were just getting on the rides. And it was like a ghost was operating it. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, also when they got to the park the gate wasn't actually locked mm. the chain literally just fell off like yeah that's it right it yeah. wasn't even together <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo -doo, big loud beacon of the park calling every zombie ever in the area to them I don't know what they expected honestly they were going on rides together without anyone operating them. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> so when they're on the tower, I doubt effing up the control box would stop the ride where it is. And honestly, I feel like it would be more likely for it to bring it down to ground level. Yeah. If nothing else, for safety reasons. Yeah. But even if it did stop it at that level, at the end, once all the zombies were dealt with, the main guy was able to use the lever to bring it down of the box that was supposed to be wrecked. Yep. All of the buttons were perfectly fine on the control box when they showed it. Like there was no damage to it. And he was able to use the release lever and it worked just fine, perfectly, as intended. No. <laughs> You'd be finding a freaking ladder at that point. No. <laughs> also, while freaking awesome and epic and badass as the kills were for Tallahassee, especially when he was enclosed in that booth, they would have, one, torn through that booth especially with their numbers. And two, he would have run out of ammo. <laughs> there ain't no way in hell. <laughs> Sorry, but no. <laughs> um, so those were the, the big points that I had. The complete and utter disregard for how utilities work, though, was the biggest thing that just drove me nuts. Otherwise, it's a very entertaining movie. It's just, they're very inconsistent with it. Especially since they never once tried to use a phone. Or the internet. If everything else works, perfectly fine. But he can't, he was traveling to Ohio. Columbus. Yeah. To try to find his parents. But they never once showed him trying to call. But all the other utilities work just fine. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> you can't say the cell towers and all are down and phone lines are down, but electricity and water works just fine. Yeah. It's not how it works. So, 
pick one. Either everything works, which is BS anyway, or none of it works. <laughs> and there's a real problem. Yeah. Also, the the grocery store that they went into was not pick clean. Crisis situations, even just like bad storms, people go nuts and clear out grocery stores of everything. The pandemic shelves were empty <laughs> when the pandemic first the hit. The weirdest things, too. Of the weirdest things. <laughs> Yeah, because I know, like... There the... were things that made sense for it to be gone. Like a lot of the pastas, bread, milk, eggs, stuff like that. That made sense. But, like, even cereals and snack cakes and, like, the most off-the-wall things were all completely gone. <laughs> well, see, for me, like, yeah, the, the, the pandemic, that was one thing. And people hoarding toilet paper, that was weird. Yes. But, um... But, like, if for the zombie <laughs> apocalypse, uh, it's, like, it would be, like, non-perishables that I can picture being yeah. picked clean. But, yeah, it's, like, in Texas, like, when uh, the, our winter storm hit, people were, like, picking off the milk specifically. I'm, like, yeah. that's weird. I'm sorry. Like, why milk specifically? Uh-huh. Like, what are you going to? I mean, I it's guess just cereal, a thing. cereal, <laughs> I guess, or if you're making like baking stuff, but it's oftentimes like oftentimes they use milk. But it's like people freak out so that and like by that in case their electricity goes out, it's like well. But what, if the electricity goes out, then how are you going to keep it at temp? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I, I mean, I guess if it's cold enough, you can just stick it outside. If it's cold enough, though, and <laughs> it depends on the kind of storm. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little shoddy in Texas. A little bit. We we often don't know what kind of weather we're going to have that day. Yeah. It usually changes yeah. a lot during the day anyway, so, you know. Yep. But. Except in the summer, and then it's just straight up heat. Yeah, but <laughs> it's a really fun movie. I think yeah. it's, if you haven't seen this movie, it's worth a watch. Uh, even if you're not into zombies or, or into horror in general, it's just a fun ride. Yep. So, but, it is. But it's not realistic, but it's a fun ride. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Lots of good comedy movements. Yes. But thank you for joining us today and let us know what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to recommend a movie game or tea, you can leave us a comment or join our Discord and if you'd like to keep up to date with our content, you can find our link tree listed below. If you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, like, and share our content. We also have a Teespring and PayPal donate button if you'd like to support us monetarily, along with our Republic of Tea affiliate link. It does not affect the price of the tea. It just helps us to continue to do what we love. You can find all of the sites mentioned linked below. But until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye. Bye.